What if Dika's true strength was his heart? Join me as we dive into a My Hero Academia X Dragon Ball crossover to explore this powerful twist. Musatafu one of the most important cities in Japan. Why you might ask? Easy in the state of Musatafu in Japan was the largest hero academy in the world, great heroes had graduated from this. Such as the current top heroes of Japan and the symbol of peace all might, that hero who stands above all, for his strength and the way he saves people no matter what. Exactly, you might also wonder about heroes? Of course, because nowadays, everything that was thought impossible became possible, people with powers appeared. The job that every child once dreamed of became a reality. Be a hero. But why? Easy, let's go back a few years in China. The first quirk detected was with a baby born in Quin Quin, China. Called a glowing baby. No one knew why people started having quirks, but it is believed to be because of the birth of this baby. In the beginning, these people were rejected, causing great conflicts, but over time, the possession of a quirk became normal. Quirks are said to be the next step in the evolution of the human race since 100% of society was born with a quirk or mutation in their body. Or so it was believed. Omniscient. Narrator. Let's go back to Musatafu on a Friday, right at this moment a green-haired mother was with her children waiting their turn to finally learn about the little one's quirks and become great heroes as they have always dreamed of since they were little. Or so they thought. Because in a few hours his whole life will take a turn of 360 degrees and more for a little green-haired boy. Nurse, Midoriya family? Inko, here we are. Nurse, you can come in now. Inko, thank you very much, with permission. The green-haired family entered a room where a bald doctor was waiting for them, sitting with large strange glasses and a big mustache. Doctor, so? Midoriya family, why is your visit here? Inko, yes, you see doctor. My children are already four years old and we want to know what their quirks are. Doctor, I understand, very well little ones, come in so we can do some tests please. Both green-haired boys underwent DNA tests to discover what their quirks were. Doctor, alright, let's start with the girl Izumi Midoriya, right? Izumi, yes. Doctor, well, congratulations little one. Seeing your results, I can see that your quirk is a mutation between your father and mother, thus giving rise to pyrokinesis. Congratulations, smiling. Izumi, did you hear that mom? I have a great quirk, I'll be a great heroine ha ha ha, smiling. Inko, I believe it, daughter, try hard, darling. Izumi, yes ma'am. Military salute. Inko, he he calm down daughter, and what is Izuku's quirk, doctor? Izuku, yes doctor, what is my quirk? Can I be a great hero? Excited. Doctor, there's a big little problem here and that is. You can't be a hero. I think you should give up. Inko, what do you mean, doctor? Confused. Doctor, you see, as you know Mrs. Midoriya, everyone has a quirk or a mutation in their body due to having a quirk, right? Inko, right, worried. Doctor, well, little Izuku doesn't show that he has a quirk or a mutation in his body that would indicate that he has a quirk. Inko, so that means Izuku doesn't have a. Doctor, quirk? That's right, this is very strange. I'm sorry Mrs. Midoriya, but everything indicates that Izuku Midoriya does not have a quirk. This is somewhat surprising since everyone manifests a quirk at the latest at the age of 4, but so far everything indicates that Izuku is a special case. Inko, I understand, doctor, looking at Izuku, thank you very much doctor, we will not bother you anymore, with your permission, bowing. The three of them left the hospital in an awkward silence because of what had happened inside the hospital leaving the three of them with different thoughts Inko was confused as Izuku didn't have a quirk that was impossible how was it that Izumi has a quirk but Izuku doesn't? The boy's mother wondered, on Izumi's side she was happy to have a great quirk as at the same time she was angry at Izuku for being useless for not being able to develop a quirk, and the poor boy was going with a lost look while in his head they echoed you can't be a hero that made the boy sad because his dream was destroyed by a few simple words he didn't have a quirk he couldn't be a hero. Izuku narrates. The trip back home I didn't mention any words, I was just lost in my thoughts, although of course on the other hand my mom was talking to my sister Izumi about how she will be a great heroine. I didn't doubt that, I was glad that she has a very amazing quirk, but what about me? Will I no longer be able to be the hero I always aspired to be? What should I do now? That and other questions were going around in my head since I always wanted to be a hero and save everyone with a smile, 
without realizing it we had arrived home so I just entered and went to my room leaving my mom and sister alone to watch my favorite video on my computer, that was an old video of a disaster that happened a long time ago, the video of a hero who debuted at that time. Video. Person, did you see that? He's already saved over 100 people, that's crazy, and it didn't take him more than 10 minutes. All Might, LOL. Person, he's laughing. All Might, everything is okay now. You ask why? Because I'm already here. End of video. Yes, without a doubt that video was incredible, I always wanted to be like him, save everyone with a smile, that video always moved me. Without realizing it I spilled a drop of water that fell on my cheek and many more followed, without realizing it I began to cry in my room when I heard how the door of my room opened so I turned to see who it was and seeing that it was my mother with crystal clear eyes, with fear I asked her a question. Izuku, Mama Ma see can I be a H hero? With tears pointing at his computer. Inko, running to hug him, I'm sorry Izuku, forgive me son, forgive me for not giving you a quirk like Izumi. I'm sorry Izuku. Crying while hugging him. No mom, I didn't want to hear that. What I wanted to hear was. Omniscient narrator. While Inko hugged her son to make him fall asleep, on the other side of the city everything was in chaos, a new story was circulating through all the media from magazines to internet media or newscasts and with the same theme. Izuku Midoriya. Boy without a quirk. Izuku Midoriya, a phenomenon without a quirk? The next morning everyone had woken up normally until the news of the situation was seen and everyone was surprised by the case of Izuku Midoriya. While with our green-haired boy he was heading to his school with his sister, but he couldn't ignore the looks of disgust or hatred that all the people gave him when they saw him walk through the streets with that many murmurs from the people who saw him but Izuku decided to ignore all that and moved faster until he reached his school while all the children looked at him or moved away from him until two people stood in front of Izuku and his sister. Yes, it was the best friends of the green-haired brothers, the twins Katsuki and Katsumi Bakugo. Katsuki, wow wow look who we have here he 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 but it's that useless Izuku. Izuku, Kachan hello how are you, smiling. Katsuki, listen to me, useless, you have no right to talk trash to me, you are just someone, if a quirk disgusts me, you have no right to be near me. Izuku, what do you mean Kachan? Katsumi, what my brother says is that we don't want you near us, freak. Katsuki, let's get out of here sister, walking away from the place. Katsumi, wait for me brother, following him. Katsuki, Izumi, looking at her, are you coming? Or are you going to stay with that useless brother of yours? Izumi, wait for me Katsuki, following him. Izuku was in shock, he had just seen his best friend despise him and push him away along with his best friend, the girl who made him feel things for her, she told him that she wanted him away and finally his sister abandoned him for not having a quirk. The day went by normally, of course, if you can say normal for Izuku, no one approached him to play or talk, everyone walked away from him leaving the freckled boy sad because everyone hated him or walked away from him for not having a quirk. At the end of classes Izumi had left with the Bakugo brothers before leaving the boy alone in the classroom putting away his things while shedding a few tears for everyone despising him for not having a quirk causing them to move away from him so he left his classroom to go home while Izuku left school to head home he was seen by all the people who didn't touch their hearts yelling at him or throwing things at him. Man, you're a phenomenon, get away from here, throwing trash at him. Woman, Monster, get out of here, throwing stones at him. Man, you are a disgrace to society, throwing eggs at him. That and many things were said to the poor boy who just walked by with his head down so as not to look at anyone in the face until he got home to just go take a shower to get clean from the things they threw at him, leaving him dirty so he decided to take a bath and then go to his room to start crying nonstop, his poor pillow being the one that received all the crying of the poor boy who felt bad seeing how all the people hated him or stayed away from him just for being different from the rest of them just for not having a quirk. Izuku didn't know how long he cried until he fell asleep in his room. The next morning he woke up with red eyes, a sign of having cried a lot, and he went to the bathroom to get ready for his new day, where he had a vague idea of what today would be like, so with sadness he got ready and when he was ready he went down to see that there was no one there. His sister had already gone to school and his mother was not there or anywhere, so he just served himself some cereal for breakfast and when he finished he washed his plate and left to go to school, on the way everyone looked at him with hatred and disgust making the boy feel bad because everyone looked at him that way. Izuku, I'd better hurry up, walking faster. Izuku walked faster to stop feeling all the stares he received from everyone until he reached his school where he went to his classroom to wait for class to start so he went to his seat and lay down to try to sleep a little more. Izuku, 
Here I also feel all the looks of hatred and disgust, I feel uncomfortable until when will the sensei arrive? Here I also feel all the looks of hatred and disgust, I feel uncomfortable until when will the sensei arrive? Yawning, I will sleep until the teacher arrives, closing his eyes. Izuku, ah! What happened? At that moment, everyone started laughing at the scare that the freckled boy got from the little joke that they had played on him. It turns out that a boy with his quirk that controlled water decided to soak him to wake him up. Izuku, great, now I'll catch a cold, sad. Girl, are you okay? Izuku, yes he he don't worry, blushing. Girl, here, clean your face, giving her a handkerchief, so you don't get sick, smiling. Izuku, thanks he he, wiping himself, thank you very much you are very kind, smiling. Izuku thought there were people who didn't care that he had a quirk, big mistake. The girl started laughing along with the whole room. Izuku, huh? What's so funny? Confused. Girl, he 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 look at yourself in the window idiot, laughing. When Izuku looked out the window he saw that it was stained with ink and when he looked better at the handkerchief he saw that it was full of ink. Izuku just grabbed his things while shedding some tears and ran out of the classroom leaving everyone laughing at the poor boy and then put on a smile of pride for having gotten rid of the quirkless in the classroom. While Izuku ran away he decided to go home while crying for what they did to those he once considered his friends. When Izuku got home he went to his room while still crying for what was happening and just for not having a quirk lying in his bed. Izuku, I just wanted to be a hero like you so I could save everyone with a smile, looking at a poster of All Might, but I don't have a quirk. What will I do now? What will my future be? Crying, will I be able to achieve my goal? Looking at the poster for the last time, can I be a hero even if I don't have a quirk? Closing his eyes. Falling asleep from all those questions that were going through his head processing everything that happened since he went to the doctor and only two days have passed without knowing that his life will be much worse from now on. Time skip. It's been three years since Izuku was diagnosed as quirkless, so the mockery became bigger and bigger along with looks of hatred and contempt among others. A new day began and the sun was coming through the windows all over Japan but we focused on the window of a little green-haired seven-year-old boy who was making an annoyed face because of the sun's rays that hit his face causing him to yawn while he rubbed his eyes to adjust to the brightness of the place. The boy didn't want to get out of bed because he had an idea of what his day would be like, so heavily decided to get out of bed to take a bath and get ready to go to school. When she finished getting ready she decided to go downstairs so she could eat something, but when she got to the kitchen she didn't see her mother or her sister. The first person was normal since her mother always left very early for work, but in the case of her sister she was surprised not to see her anywhere, so she deduced that she must have already left for school. She decided to stop thinking about it and helped herself to some cereal for breakfast. When he finished eating, he washed his plate and headed to his school under the watchful eyes of all the people around him. The boy felt overwhelmed by all the looks of contempt, disgust, or even hatred that people were throwing at him, so he decided to speed up his pace with his head down but he realized that he collided with a person. Izuku, ouch, sorry, are you okay ma'am? Shaking his hand, let me help you, okay? Smiling. Lady, don't bring your disgusting hand closer to me, you freak, rejecting his hand, watch where you go, are you blind too, stupid? Getting up. Izuku, please forgive me, bowing. Lady, hum, despicable quirkless, walking away from the place. The green-haired boy just lowered his head as he shed tears and walked to his school to try to forget what had happened recently. When he entered his classroom he went to his seat to rest a little while his teacher arrived but his plan was ruined by a grey-haired boy. Katsuki, how are you useless? Don't you feel bad? Izuku, Kachan hello, confused, what do you mean? Katsuki, well, I saw how the lady you ran into treated you and it made me laugh ha ha ha. Izuku just lowered his head sadly remembering what had happened with the lady, just remembering how she saw him made him panic because he considered him a monster or even a freak. Some time later the teacher arrived to start his classes. Time passed like this until it was time for recess where everyone went to eat leaving the boy alone in the classroom who didn't want to leave so as not to feel the stairs so he decided to eat inside the classroom alone so he could eat an order of takoyakus in peace, but his peace was interrupted when his sister arrived with her best friend Katsumi. Katsumi, Hey loser we were looking for you, smiling. Izuku, hmm. Izumi, useless, I need you to give me your money to buy something to eat. Izuku, I can't sister, I already spent it to buy this order of takoyakus, sorry. Izumi, then I'll take that, snatching the takoyakus from him, thanks useless, walking away. Izuku, w wait Izumi, 
getting her attention, that's mine give it back to me, nervous. Izumi, are you, a useless person, giving me an order? Angry, that's it, blowing smoke from her hands. Izuku, and no chaff course not only that it was mine, scared. Izumi, well now it's mine idiot, leaving. Katsumi, see you later idiot, following her. That's how the day ended, making Izuku head home so he could eat something because of what happened at school. When he got home he saw his mother cooking some food so he went over to greet her. Izuku, hello mom. Inko, hello Izuku. Izuku, it smells so good what are you preparing? Inko, I'm making udon, do you want some? Izuku, yes, thank you. Inko, calm down Izuku hee hee. When Inko was about to serve her son Izumi appeared to ask his mother something. Izumi, mom, come, come look at this, pushing her away from the kitchen, you'll be surprised. Inko, calm down Izumi, I'm coming. While both green-haired girls left the kitchen leaving Izuku alone who lowered his head sadly. Izuku, he doesn't even care about me, sad. Izuku munched some udon as he ate in deep silence. When he finished eating he washed his plate and went to his room to start doing his homework, finishing it in a few minutes. When he finished he decided to put on some more comfortable clothes and then lie down on his bed while he slowly fell into the realm of dreams. When he opened his eyes he discovered that he was not in his room but somewhere else. It was a large field with a beautiful lake surrounded by trees and a field full of petals but what caught his attention the most was a shadow that looked like a person only it was with its back turned while staring at the lake. Izuku, he hey, where where am I? But the shadow didn't react, it only said a few words in a whisper that Izuku could barely hear. Shadow, it's not time yet. You're not ready yet. Come back. Later. After that the whole place went dark leaving the boy in a dark room closing his eyes because of the fear of the place. But when he opened his eyes again he realized he was in his room. Izuku, what was that? Confused, a dream? I have no idea what time it is? Seeing on a clock that it was 3 a.m., I better keep sleeping. But something the boy did not expect was that he could not sleep a wink all night, so he had experienced several questions running through his head. Izuku, what was that place? Why did I have that dream? Who was that guy? This is all very strange but what draws my attention the most is what he said to me, what does he mean when he said it's not time yet? This is very strange. While the boy was trying to figure out an answer he didn't realize that he spent the whole night trying to find an answer but got nothing. So he decided to take a bath and then put on his uniform and go down to the first floor to see that there was no one there, so the boy, somewhat sadly, decided to have breakfast in silence. When he finished eating, he washed his plate and left his house to go to school, and although people still looked at him with disgust, he didn't pay much attention because he was too deep in thought. Izuku, all this has to have a reason, but what could it be? First, who was that guy? He looked human although his hairstyle is too strange to deduce him as human, but really, what did he mean when he said it's not time yet? Because he was lost in his thoughts, he didn't realize when he arrived at school or when he was at his desk. He didn't even pay any attention to class because of the same questions that were slowly eating away at him. As he headed home with his mind a little calmer, he thought better about what he meant about it not being the time yet. Izuku, what did he mean by it's not time yet? Maybe it's too soon? But too soon for what? I wasn't ready yet? Ready for what exactly? What did that guy want from me? Because he was so lost in his thoughts, he didn't hear the Bakugo brothers and Izumi calling him, driving Katsuki crazy. Katsuki. Damn useless don't ignore me. Letting out an explosion, shiny. When Katsuki launched the explosion, a large smoke screen was created, preventing them from seeing the green-haired man. When the smoke screen faded, an unconscious Izuku could be seen with large burns on various parts of his body and part of his uniform destroyed or burned. Katsumi, brother, what stupid thing did you do? Upset, if someone sees it like this, they'll scold us, idiot. Angry. Katsuki, who are you calling an idiot, an idiot? No one will notice. Katsumi, idiot, when Aunt Inko asks for him, what will we tell her? Izumi, calm down Katsumi, my mom won't even notice that you're not home so there's nothing to worry about, let's just go, passing by Izuku, weak. Katsumi just sighed and then relaxed her expression, following her friend and brother, leaving Izuku alone on the sidewalk unconscious. As time passed, people saw him lying down, but when they approached to help him, they saw that it was the quirkless Izuku Midoriya, so they ignored him and left him to die for being a phenomenon. 
No one helped the boy who woke up hours later to see that it was already night time so he got up from the ground but when he did he felt like his whole body hurt so when he looked closely he saw that part of his uniform was torn and that he had burns on some parts of his body but leaving that aside he decided to move forward to go home. The boy arrived home seeing his mother and sister watching a movie, so the boy felt miserable when he saw that, so he went in without saying a word to go to his room to take a bath and heal some of the burns and then put on more comfortable clothes and then lay down on his bed while looking at the ceiling. Izuku, damn, Kachan went overboard with that attack and my whole body hurts, sore, ouch, yawning, I think I better get some sleep. The next morning the boy continued with his daily routine, waking up, taking a shower, putting on his uniform, going down to eat, only to leave and be judged with looks of hatred, shame and contempt, and then arriving at his school to be greeted by the jokes of all the children in his class. Everything was normal until it was time to leave, where Izuku decided to go to the park that was by his house to clear his mind so he decided to go there, but when he arrived he came across a very bad scene. It turns out that the Bakugo brothers along with their sister Izumi were bothering a black-haired girl who threatened to cry, because she was being threatened by Katsuki and Katsumi's explosions while Izumi was playing with a green fire in her hands, so without thinking twice she launched herself to the girl's defense. She knew it wouldn't end well or that she would come out unscathed, but she did it even though she was afraid she ran to her defense. Izuku, stop. Arriving with them, I won't let them do anything to her, getting between them and the girl, leave her alone, trembling. Katsuki, still be an idiot or you will pay the consequences, creating explosions. Katsumi, move, you fool, don't get involved in where you're called, creating explosions as well. Izumi, move idiot, don't defend her, you heard me. Angry, you don't even know her better, move aside, idiot. Izuku, no. I won't do it sister I won't move this girl didn't do anything wrong this is wrong. This certainly surprised the three of them. Izuku spoke confidently, not giving a hint of nervousness or fear. Katsuki, listen useless, move, it's my last warning, if you don't, I'll take it out on you, angry, don't get involved where you're not called, trash. But the boy didn't move, instead he got into a fighting stance while he trembled with fear of facing his sister along with his friends. Izuku, I I won't do it Kachan that makes a hero saving everyone e even though they don't a ask for help, nervous. Katsuki, damn useless move you can never be a hero. You're just a useless bastard now get out. But the boy didn't move at all. He was hurt by what he said to the person he considered his best friend. Izumi, very well, idiot, you asked for it, running with his friends. After about 5 minutes Izumi and her friends left, leaving the unharmed girl in front of an Izuku with bruises and burns on various parts of his body while he was breathing roughly. Girl, H hey, A are you okay okay? Shy and worried. Izuku, why yeah he 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 you. It hurts even to laugh, smiling, tell me are you okay? They didn't hurt you? Right? Worried. Girl, and no, nothing happened to me thanks to you, shy. Izuku, that's good, I thought you were hurt before I got here. Girl, tell me. Why? Izuku, why what? Girl, why did you save me? Why you don't K know me? Izuku, oh he he. Tell me one thing. Is there any reason not to have to save someone in danger? Girl, th, thanks, shy. Izuku, d don't worry about it either. Girl, hmm. Izuku, my legs moved by themselves, embarrassed. Girl, thank you, crying. Izuku, D don't cry okay? It's better to smile he he, smiling with difficulty. Girl, why yes he he tell me what your name is? Izuku, oh sorry about what happened, I forgot to do it he he my name is Izuku Midoriya it's a pleasure, smiling. Girl, Izuku Midoriya you are the boy everyone is talking about, impressed, you are the boy who doesn't have a quirk. Izuku, yes, T that's me, sad. Girl, what's wrong? Why are you sad? Izuku, oh it's just that. Nobody approaches me or wants to talk to me. I would like to be a hero but I don't have a quirk. Now you'll make fun of me, sad. Girl, what nonsense. Izuku, hmm. Girl, how I would make fun of the person who saved me. You know, I think there's nothing wrong with you not having a quirk, for me you're great. And I think you'd be a great hero, shy. Izuku, do you think so? Do you think I can be a hero even if I don't have a quirk? Girl, of course. Izuku, th, thanks, blushes. Girl, it's nothing Midoriya-san. Izuku, hey now that I think about it what's your name? Curious. 
Girl, oh. Excuse my manners, my name is Momo Yaoirozu, nice to meet you. Izuku, nice to meet you Yaoirozu-san. They were both about to continue talking, but a middle-aged man in an elegant suit approached them. Sir, Miss Yaoirozu it's time to go back. Yaoirozu, oh, depressed, I have to go Midoriya-san again, thanks, bowing. Izuku, it was nothing he he, embarrassed, take care Yaoirozu-san, walking away slowly while limping. The girl just watched as the boy slowly left while showing traces of pain from the blows he received to protect her, so she just touched her chest and then watched him walk away from her sight. Yaoyorozu, whispering, thanks you're my hero he he he. When the boy walked away from the place while limping, he was happy to have protected that girl and that his sister and her friends had not hurt her. Izuku, well it hurts less than it seems he 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 ouch. Leaning against a wall, I better not laugh ayayaye, rubbing himself, it will be better to go home. When he got home the boy just went up to his room to take a bath and heal some of his burns caused by his sister Izumi for having used her quirk against him. When the boy finished healing he decided to go down to eat something but when he arrived he saw his mother and his sister eating some rice together while they had a pleasant chat while reading a book but what hurt the boy the most was seeing how there was no plate for him, Izuku after seeing that felt as if something broke inside him. Inko, feeling her son's presence, just looked up to see his crystal clear eyes. Inko was surprised by that until she realized why the boy was like that, she had forgotten him. Just at that moment the boy felt a deep pain with the Bakugo brothers those whom he considered his best friends when they could together with his sister Izumi they made fun of him or even hit him for not having a quirk it made the poor boy feel miserable who every chance they got told him that he couldn't be a hero but none of that hurt him more than seeing how his mother only paid attention to his sister. Inko, Izuku hi son sit down I'll bring you. Do you want some rice? Nervous. The boy just looked down as he clenched his fists while biting his lower lip. Izuku's pressure in clenching his fists was so great that you could see his hands shaking. The boy just turned around without saying a word to go to his room but then he was hit by a book that hit him on the head from Izumi. Izumi, hey idiot. Mom is talking to you. Inko, Izumi. Angry. Izuku just decided to ignore this but decided to leave the house better when he was about to pass the door Inko spoke again. Inko, is Izuku, it's already too tea late to go out where where are you going? Izuku, I'll go for a walk, but I don't know why you're asking or why you're interested, cold. Both Izumi and Inko were surprised by the boy's response, one by how he spoke and the other by feeling the coldness of his words. As Izuku walked through the streets he couldn't stop feeling all the looks from people, the boy no longer had to try to guess what they were thinking because he knew very well that everyone was looking at him with disgust, contempt or even hatred so the boy didn't decide to move faster as he always did, he just continued on his normal path but with great pain accompanied by something surprising. Anger. He doesn't know how much time had passed since he left home, so seeing that it was already darker he decided to return home but when he was crossing an alley he was greeted by a strong wave of air that almost made him fly when the boy turned to see the cause of this he found someone he never expected to see because in front of him was the symbol of peace the powerful all might arresting some thieves who were in that area. Izuku just watched in amazement as his idol caught all the thieves in a few seconds. The boy was impressed. The only thing he could say at that moment was. Izuku, wow. Impressed. The symbol upon hearing that turned around, meeting a boy of approximately 8 years old who had an expression of astonishment. All Might upon seeing him only did what he does best towards a fan. All Might, ha 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 everything is fine now. You ask why? Why am I here now? Izuku, All Might. All Might, himself, smiling. Izuku, this is amazing, excited. All Might, tell me kid, what's your name? Izuku, I'm his Izuku Mito Midoriya sir, I'm your biggest fan, nervous. All Might, ha ha, it's an honor to meet a fan, now excuse me, I have something to do. See you soon, loading the thieves. Izuku, wait. Approaching. All Might, crime doesn't wait kid, keep supporting me from the cameras, about to jump. Izuku wanted to talk to him, he wanted to ask for his autograph, take a photo posing together and ask his idol a lot of questions, but at that moment. I'm sorry Izuku. Forgive me son. I think you should give up. Izuku, that may all be true. But. Still I. Those phrases came to his mind but he did not stop and decided to speak again with courage, he asked a question that would change his destiny forever. Izuku, can I be a hero? All might. Hmm. Izuku, can I be a hero even if I don't have a quirk? A person like me could be a great hero like you? He did it, 
he asked his idol if he could be a hero even if he was the only human who didn't have a quirk. All Might, without a quirk? Forgive me but I can't just tell you you can become a hero without a power it would be dangerous but you can become an officer they are not that respected but you can help people I'm sorry kid. But you can't be a hero. You should give up. Izuku, boo but. All Might, it's not bad to dream, but you also have to take into account what's realistic. Goodbye, jumping. I hear that right. Did his idol tell him that he should give up? The boy couldn't believe it and decided to walk away from the place while he was shedding tears. His idol, the person who showed and said that you should never give up, told him to give up. Izuku, don't cry, you already knew that, right? It's reality, you knew that's why you tried so desperately, you deceived yourself that you didn't accept reality. He doesn't know when he arrived, but he was on Dagoba Beach. He remembered that when he was younger it was a beautiful place to come with his family, but now the entire beach was completely dirty because there was junk everywhere. But he didn't care and he continued forward until he was in front of the ocean, where he could see the entire horizon while tears ran down his cheeks. The boy couldn't take it anymore and exploded. Izuku, ah! A powerful, heartrending scream was released by the boy. For three long years he was the object of ridicule and contempt. The boy always maintained a positive attitude, thinking that all of this would change for the better. But after three years where there was no change, he gave up. Izuku, the right he he, crying, I'm just useless, I can't be a hero, why try to change it, I have to stop dreaming, I don't have a quirk, I'm a freak, I can't be anyone's hero. You should give up. You're just useless. You can't be a hero. I'm sorry Izuku. Forgive me son. Every time people looked at him badly, said things to him, made jokes, told him to give up, the boy was about to do it but he remembered something. Yaoyorozu, how I would make fun of the person who saved me. You know, I think there's nothing wrong with not having a quirk, for me you're great. And I think you'd be a great hero, shy. Izuku, do you think so? Do you think I can be a hero even if I don't have a quirk? Yaoyorozu, of course yes. But it clearly says that he was a hero, he saved that girl from his sister with his friends, he had already rescued someone, he had already been a hero, he couldn't give up. Not yet. Izuku, it's not possible he he I think that no matter how hard I try. I will never have a quirk. He's right and no matter how hard I try there are things that will be impossible for me. No. I've already given up. No. Not yet, I'm not giving up yet, I showed my most pathetic side to the world. Wait a little longer. I'm not going to give up in life. Ha ha ha. Don't underestimate me destiny, I'm going to make it. I don't care if it takes me 1, 10 or 100 years. I will try as hard as I can even if I don't have a quirk, I'm going to be the best hero and I will show that even if I have a quirk or not, everyone can become someone incredible. You'll see. Ready Izuku's motivation increased compared to before but it was easier said than done what he promised. Izuku, fine, I'll be a hero even if I try twice or even three times as hard. But how will I do it? At that the boy saw the whole beach full of garbage at that the boy gave a smile of excitement. Izuku, something just occurred to me, smiling. Time skip. Three years have passed since Izuku decided to become a hero despite being rejected by everyone, even by his idol All Might, but that did not discourage him anymore and he took it as a challenge, a challenge to overcome. Now we see a 10-year-old green-haired boy cleaning Dagoba Beach. The boy planned to clean the beach as part of his training to become a hero. The boy had started three years ago and has cleaned more than half of the beach. This fact surprised people who passed by the place to see how the beach began to be clean from one time to the next. No one knew who had done it. Of course, no one knew that the one who cleaned it was that boy who was always despised or made fun of for not having a quirk. But let's focus on the green-haired boy who since he started cleaning Dagoba Beach started a new routine which was to get up at 5 a.m. to clean the beach and return home at 6 a.m. to take a shower, get ready for school, go down to eat and leave for his school. When classes ended he was the first to leave the place without saying a word, of course this baffled everyone at school who saw him arrive at school, sit at his desk and wait for classes to start where every time they asked a question he answered it easily, surprising everyone by how intelligent the boy was. Of course his sister Izumi didn't like this at all since Izuku showed everyone that he was smarter than his sister, 
In Katsumi's case it was envy for seeing how easy it was for the boy to do schoolwork with ease when everyone did it in teams, he did it alone but he still finished first, but the most special case is that of Katsuki who was furious with the freckled boy for being better than him in everything because although the boy did not have a quirk he was very good in gym classes who had good resistance, speed and strength aspects in which Katsuki believed himself to be the best but the freckled boy equaled him with difficulties for not having a quirk although of course this surprised everyone because that boy who had no quirk was one of the best in the entire school everyone and wondered how he did all that? Of course the answer was simple because when the boy left school he would go home to change into sportswear to leave his house without saying a word to his mother who felt bad because she always swore to herself that she would never forget him but the fact is that she never kept her word because Izumi always needed her for something leaving aside her son who she didn't care about anymore because it had been normal for four years. That's why the boy always left his house jogging when he came home from school to get to Dagoba Beach and start his training to clean the beach by himself. The boy spent the whole day cleaning the beach to finish his training quickly and then go home to take a shower and go down to cook his food because his mother always forgot him, so the boy learned to cook, so the boy ate what she prepared. After eating, he went up to lock himself in his room to do his homework and read a book and then sleep and start again with his daily routine. The boy had a clear goal of becoming a hero even if he didn't have a quirk and despite the looks and words he heard or felt, he decided to ignore them to move forward. Of course all his training finally paid off as the boy had finished cleaning the entire Dagoba beach and of course he celebrated this in a spectacular way. Izuku, ah. The boy was standing on an old refrigerator while he was shirtless giving a shout of victory because he had managed to clean the entire beach in its entirety. The boy now had great muscles for someone his age, causing his clothes to be tighter, making his muscles more prominent. Of course, this was seen by Izuku's classmates, who blushed slightly at the sight of the boy's muscle mass. The freckled boy thought that everything was going well because even his three attackers began to leave him alone. He thought that everything was going to be okay at last. How wrong he was. One day while they were in class the teacher asked everyone to write down which academy they would go to. Of course this was normal until the teacher started saying out loud which academies they would go to. The freckled boy felt nervous about what would happen now. Of course everyone was surprised why the Bakugo brothers along with Izumi would take the exam to enter the UA. Of course everyone was surprised by it but that went from surprise to mockery as the teacher continued talking. Teacher, by the way, it says here that Izuku will also take the exam to enter the UA. This went from surprise to mockery. Everyone made fun of the boy who only lowered his head in sadness as he heard everyone telling him to give up. This was clearly seen by three presses who were angry with the freckled boy. At the end of classes, the freckled boy was putting away his things when a notebook was snatched from him. When he turned to see who it was, he knew he would be in trouble. In front of him were his attackers. Katsumi, damn Deku, you're just a hindrance, a damn stone in our way. Izumi, Deku give up damn you can't be a hero. Katsuki, Deku. Just give up already, damn it. You're just a fucking nuisance. You can't be a hero since you don't have a quirk. Izuku was angry he was already tired of everyone telling him what he could or couldn't do so he just exploded. Izuku, enough. Getting up from his seat. Shut up you damn hypocrite, I know I'm useless, that I have no talent but I'm. Fighting with everything I've got. It's always the same, everyone making fun of me and putting me down. What's wrong with a nobody aspiring to be stronger? Ready the boy exploded, he spoke with force and firmness again, that facet that the three were surprised by because the first time they saw it was when he protected that girl from the three of them. Angry Bakugo just gave him an explosion causing the boy to fall sitting on the ground and then turned to see him while his hand was smoking from his explosion. Katsuki, that's where you belong at my feet because that's what you are. You're a loser, with a sly smile. Izuku, with his head down, so that's the reason I'm here. I must, thank you. Besides, if a loser tries hard enough, he can surpass a distinguished hero. Katsuki only got angrier but decided to leave him alone. He turned around ready to leave with the girls but before leaving he turned around to see him once more. Katsuki, you want so much from a hero, huh? Izuku only paid attention to his words. Katsuki, that's simple, jump off the roof and pray that in your next life you will be reincarnated with a quirk, leaving the place. Did he hear correctly that he urged him to commit suicide? Was that the kind friend with whom he laughed as children? The boy just got up and headed for the exit. On the way, the boy only remembered the words of his former best friend. Jump off the roof and pray that in your next life you will be reincarnated with a quirk. The boy decided to go to Dagoba Beach to sit and meditate on things. When he arrived alone, 
He went to a lonely spot on the beach where he sat under a palm tree while he closed his eyes in sadness for having heard what his friend told him. When the boy opened his eyes he was in that mysterious place. Hello, it's been a long time, right? Izuku turned around where he could see that shadow from long ago in front of him, only now he could distinguish it. He was a tall black-haired man with a somewhat strange hairstyle along with an orange and blue uniform and what caught her attention the most was that something was moving from his back, was it a tail? After so much time I can talk to you well, kid. Izuku, who are you? Oh forgive me ha 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 let me introduce myself my name is Goku, smiling. Face to face Izuku saw the mysterious subject who introduced himself with the name of Goku, the boy did not feel any hostility so he knew that there was no problem in talking to him. Izuku, so Mr. Goku where are we? Goku, we are in your mind Izuku. Izuku, ah wow. But I have a question, why are you on my mind? Goku, wow, you're smarter than I thought ha ha ha, scratching the back of his neck. Izuku, well it's not that surprising if you think about it, because I don't know him and I've never seen him, so I asked him what he's doing in my mind? Goku, okay, pay attention. Goku would tell Izuku about his adventures, how he met Bulma, how they became friends to get the Dragon Balls, how he met Krillin and Master Roshi, how he grew up and became strong, how he started a family with his wife Milk, his children Gohan and Goten, how Goku's brother, Raditz kidnapped Gohan and told him about the Scions and that he was one, how he became that legendary Super Saiyan, how he fought against the God of Destruction until he reached the Tournament of Power where his universe won. It must be said that Izuku could not have any other expression than astonishment because he is surprised by what Goku has experienced. Izuku, wow, Mr. Goku, you've been through a lot, impressed. Goku, yes but I'm not the only one ha. Huh? Izuku, yes, I think so, depressed. Goku, come on, don't be discouraged. Izuku, hey, I have a question. Goku, go ahead, tell me without shame. Izuku, I imagine that tale shows that you are that Saiyan race, right? Goku, this is my tale, it shows that I'm a Saiyan. Izuku, I understand. But I don't understand why it's on my mind? Goku, oh right, I didn't say it, a great threat is coming Izuku and we have to be prepared to protect the world, seriously. Izuku, but I don't understand why it's on my mind? Could it be? Izuku remained silent if Goku was in his mind and told him about a great threat he did not give a good direction because the boy felt something wrong. Izuku, tell me this has nothing to do with me. Goku, if you're right, you're our last salvation, Izuku. Izuku, but why me? I'm just useless, I don't even have a quirk to be a hero, I can't do it, I refuse. Goku, Izuku, let me. Izuku, no. I'm just a nobody, I don't have a quirk. I won't do it. Goku, Izuku please just listen. Izuku, I'm sorry Mr. Goku but I won't do it, I can't help you, forgive me. Goku, Izuku, no man can escape from his history. Izuku, you don't know. I'm sorry Mr. Goku but I can't, I'm not very strong. I better go. Walking away from Goku, as the boy walked away Goku watched him disappear with each step he took until he disappeared completely. Goku, sooner or later you'll come back, smiling. Outside the boy got up from the beach and decided to go back home while the same words passed through his mind. You are our last salvation. Izuku, I can't help it, I don't have a quirk, sad. The boy returned home and just went to his room to try to fall asleep, which after a while he managed to fall asleep. So the days passed, Izuku mentally refused to accept his destiny because he knew he was not strong enough. But as the days passed, the boy felt more and more suffocated by his destiny until he gave up and decided to return to his mind to talk to Goku. Goku, oh you're back, happy. Izuku, tell me something Mr. Goku. Goku, go ahead. Izuku, tell me, why me? Out of millions of people with powerful quirks, why did you choose me? Goku, tell me if you get a quirk what would you do? Seriously. That surprised Izuku because in the time he spoke with Goku he knew that he was someone kind and happy, even carefree, but that new facet of Goku surprised him. Izuku, what do you mean? Goku, tell me if you get a quirk what would you do with it? Seriously. Izuku, that's obvious. I would become a hero who saves everyone with a smile and shows safety and protection to everyone. Goku, there is your answer ha ha ha. Izuku, what do you mean? Goku, easy. 
you have a pure heart and there is no one who would do what you would for the society that discriminates against you so much, the majority would seek revenge while the other part would just let them die but not you, your heart is pure that is why you are my choice. Izuku was seriously surprised he had the pure heart to be the chosen one to protect humanity but now he was sure of his decision. Izuku, okay, I'll do it, self-confident. Goku, that's the attitude ha ha ha. Izuku, so how will I protect the world? Curious. Goku, easy, you'll become a Saiyan. Izuku, and how will I do it? Goku, easy, you'll fuse with my spirit. Izuku, is it possible? Unsure. Goku, of course then you are ready to be a hero? Extending his hand. Izuku, for protecting the world, holding his hand. Goku, okay, listen, you have to go find my master Roshi, okay? Izuku, okay, where do I find it? Goku, don't worry when we are fused you will see my memories and you will know how to find him, starting to disappear, tell him that you come from me that the prophecy has begun he will understand. Izuku, okay. Goku, good luck. Now you are a Z warrior ha ha ha. Izuku, it will be an honor he he he. Goku, by the way, don't be scared when your tail comes out ha ha ha. Izuku, wait. What? Goku, ha 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 you're not going to be a Saiyan for nothing. But don't worry, I'll be helping you become a Saiyan. Izuku, sighing, since. Resigned, thanks. Goku, one last thing, don't look at the full moon for too long when you have your tail. Izuku, what, but why? What? What? Goku, you will become Ozaru, a kind of giant monkey, but I know you can control it. Izuku, since. I'll try he. Goku, good luck, by the way when you're ready to leave say this in the air, flying cloud. He he it's a gift from me. Izuku, fine, thank you. Goku, please. Izuku listen to me, it is not a sin to fight for justice on the contrary that is a good deed remember that there are opponents who will never understand with words you just have to release the fury that is in your spirit, I understand how you feel but you do not have to continue to bear it. Izuku protect the living beings. And the plants of this world. That I love so much. I entrust it to you, disappeared. Izuku, leave it to my lord Goku. After that Izuku left his mind to find himself on Dagoba beach but at that moment the boy put his hands to his head while he felt an enormous pain until after a few seconds the pain disappeared. The boy recovered with Goku's memories of how he became a Saiyan, his techniques, his loved ones and all his memories were in the boy's possession. Leaving that aside he decided to go home where he only entered his room to prepare a suitcase with clothes and then left his house without anyone seeing him. The boy just ran out of his house, a place where he lived many things with his sister like when they watched movies together or played at being heroes like his mother played the role of saving her, as they ate together. The boy just let out a few tears and left his old home. The freckled boy arrived at Dagoba Beach, where he trained to become stronger. Izuku, well, it's about time. Flying Cloud. In the sky you can see a yellow trail approaching the boy, at first Izuku was scared to see something heading towards him at high speed but then he calmed down when he saw it getting in front of the boy. Izuku saw that it was a small cloud but of a yellowish color so he doubtfully climbed onto the cloud and saw that he did not fall and that it was even very comfortable. Izuku, well, time to go, turns to look at the city, I must become strong to protect everyone, looking at the ocean, time to go. You can see how the great ocean was moving from one side to the other peacefully but suddenly you can see through the reflection a yellow flash crossing it. In that yellow flash you can see a boy going with a backpack on a yellow cloud at full speed across the immense ocean. The boy appreciated the great ocean until after about 30 minutes of going over the ocean he saw something. In the distance you could see a small island with only one pink house, and closer up you could see the word came house written in blue. Izuku, knowing that it was the right place, decided to speed up his pace on his flying cloud to get there faster when the boy came down from the cloud to see what a desolate place looked like, so he went to the door to knock. Izuku, hello, is anyone home? Knocking on the door. Then the door opens revealing a short, bald man with black sunglasses carrying a turtle shell on his back. Hi what can I do for you boy can I do for you boy? Izuku, good afternoon, are you Master Roshi? Roshi, correct, that's right, I am the great Master Roshi striking a strange pose. Izuku, great, let me introduce myself. I'm Izuku Midoriya sir and I'm here because of Mr. Goku's prophecy. Roshi, so you are our salvation? That you are our salvation? Analyzing it. Izuku, I still don't know if I can be it. 
but I will try hard, master. Roshi, well that's the attitude. Now how about you come in and get settled? Tomorrow we'll start your training, shall we? Izuku, thank you very much for accepting me master, bowing. Roshi, don't worry, come in, entering the house. Izuku, with your permission, following him. Roshi, well he's not rude like Goku that's good. Izuku entered and settled into a room then went downstairs where he found Master Roshi sitting watching television so he accompanied him watching a somewhat strange movie for the freckled boy. When the movie ended, Master Roshi asked the boy questions, which he answered without any problem until there was a question that confused him a little. Roshi, tell me Izuku, why do you want to be a hero? Izuku, I want to protect and save everyone from danger. Roshi, no, I asked you why you want to be a hero? Not for what? Izuku, um indeed. I was born without a quirk when I was little I always wanted to be a great hero, the one who saves them from danger with a smile, the one who smiles for others, the one who stands in the way of evil to protect everyone. That was my dream but unfortunately I didn't awaken any quirk, sad, but. Master Roshi remained silent. He wanted to know the reason why he became stronger because it would help him because of the prophecy, but he did not want him to seek revenge on others because he was strong. Izuku, when I found out I didn't have a quirk, my world fell apart. Everyone said that quirks were the next step in evolution, that everyone would manifest a quirk, but I didn't. Thanks to them, I was the victim of mockery, beatings, abuse, and more. People saw me, but they looked at me with a look of disgust, hatred, contempt. I always heard everyone's comments that I was just a freak, a useless person. A. A Deku. Shedding tears. Master Roshi felt bad about everything that had happened, the boy knew that this was a difficult thing to live with, so he tried to change the conversation. Roshi, how about? Izuku, this is why I want to be a hero. The boy gave a scream that surprised the teacher so he turned to look at him. Izuku, I want to be a hero, someone who stands up for others. I want to show the world that I can be a hero even if I don't have a quirk. Even if I'm useless, I want to show everyone that nothing is impossible. That's why I'll be a hero. I've already given up once, I don't want to do it again. I want to be a hero who inspires others, someone who shows that nothing is impossible for those who fight. That's my reason for being a hero. Master Roshi looked at him, he could see his gaze. That look of determination, the freckled boy wasn't playing around and Master Roshi knew it so he just sighed and spoke. Roshi, sigh, rest, tomorrow we'll start early. Get ready because I won't be bleeding, smiling. Izuku, yes. The next morning the freckled boy was surprised because he left the house to jog a little but when he left he saw that the island had expanded because there was even a large forest and at the same time a large volcano a little further away he could see a few houses so the freckled boy was surprised. Izuku, what the heck? Roshi, good morning Izuku, follow me, training starts now. The boy followed the teacher until they reached a man who was carrying some boxes of milk, which confused the boy a little. Roshi, good morning good man. Are these the boxes that need to be delivered? Sir, oh yes of course they are all these, showing four boxes, but can they do it alone? Roshi, don't worry, we'll make them. Okay, Izuku, take this, giving him a shell and an orange suit with blue parts, this is the turtle school uniform, go ahead and try it on. Izuku put it on but when he put on the turtle shell he almost fell on his back because it was too heavy. Izuku, heavens! How much does this weigh? Roshi, that weighs 20 kilograms. Izuku, what? Roshi, don't worry, we'll gain more weight later, don't worry. The one I'm using weighs 50 kilograms, ha ha ha. Now take this, handing him the milk boxes, do the same as me and follow me, we have to train, jumping while running. Izuku, weight master Roshi, copying his movements. Martial arts grandmaster Roshi's training has begun. It's been three months since Izuku met the great master Roshi, who agreed to train him to become a hero. Of course at first the master had his doubts about the boy because he thought that when he became strong he would seek revenge but it was the opposite. The boy showed Roshi that he does not seek revenge he wants to be a true hero the master could see his great determination in his eyes the boy was not playing at all. So the master knowing the boy's purpose for wanting to be stronger did not hesitate to train him of course, it was a much heavier training than when he did it with those two students who showed him great strength and competitive spirit. Izuku began his training as a milkman, 
Of course this at first made Izuku doubt if this man was really a great martial arts master but he decided to trust him because if Mr. Goku said that he was his teacher and told him to go with him to become stronger it could be true he put that aside so he accepted the training because he thought that this job would be useful for something so it had to be for something so he decided to trust him. Of course he did this every day before the sun came up, at first it was difficult for him to adapt to the training, but after a few days of training he managed to keep up with his master. Of course Master Roshi was surprised because in a few days he was already following him very closely, not even Krillin or even Goku caught up with him so soon, so he decided to put more weight on his turtle shell. The boy did not refute anything because he knew that if Master Roshi put more weight on his turtle shell it was because he was doing the training well, so instead of seeing it as a punishment, the boy saw it as a gift of effort for his training that little by little was bearing fruit. We can see how Izuku and Master Roshi were lying on hammocks while feeling the fresh air of the place, it was a beautiful moment of peace. Izuku, Master. Roshi, what's wrong? Izuku, why are we doing this? Curious. Roshi, why not? It's a good time. Calmly. Izuku, I understand. Wait what? Upset, it can't be, standing up. Roshi, what's wrong? Curious about his sudden attitude. Izuku, Master, there's no time. If I'm the person of that prophecy, I don't have time for this. Shouldn't I be training nonstop? worried. Roshi, relax kid. Izuku, no, I can't do it. Everyone will be at risk and I'm their last salvation but instead of getting stronger I'm resting. I can't do it. I'll go inside, leaving. Roshi, boy waits. Izuku, no. I won't do it master I have to become stronger, walking away. Roshi, if you leave I won't train you anymore. Getting up. Just hearing those words the boy stopped dead. Did his teacher really mean it? Izuku, but. Roshi, I'm serious kid. Now come and relax, settling down. The boy just did what he asked, when the boy lay down he saw the sky turn orange implying that the sunset had already begun, the boy slowly appreciated it while he looked at his teacher out of the corner of his eye who seemed relaxed, too much. Roshi, listen Izuku. You have to work, you have to learn, you have to eat, you have to rest. And you also have to play. Those are the bases of Master Roshi's training to be in good condition. Is that clear? Izuku, yes Master. Sorry for getting upset, sad for his action. Roshi, don't apologize, I know how you feel. Izuku, really? Curious. Roshi, but of course I'm not your teacher for nothing ha ha ha. Listen Izuku, I understand that you must feel stressed, worried or desperate to become strong and be able to protect the world, but a lot of good is bad. That's why it's good that you want to get strong soon, but remember this. There are no shortcuts, only hard work. Train hard and be patient. It will pay off. Izuku, okay master, relaxing, thank you. Falling asleep. Roshi, watching him sleep, this boy will be a great hero without a doubt, happy, he will also become very powerful, I know that just by looking at him he he he, closing his eyes and falling asleep. Time skip. Nine months have passed since that talk in which Izuku followed his master's advice and decided to take everything more calmly because he knew he had to become stronger but everything had its time and he couldn't rush it. As time went by, the training also became more difficult, because apart from Izuku having to carry the milk boxes everywhere, his turtle shell became heavier, currently weighing 65 kilograms, an overwhelming weight but one that Izuku could move with a little ease because all the training he did served to make him stronger. Izuku after four months of delivering milk all over the island, also began to work in the fields, as with his bare hands he dug holes in the fields and then planted seeds and watered them while still carrying his turtle shell. As the days passed Izuku got used to the new training, that is until six months passed when Master Roshi gave Izuku new training as he also began to work on construction sites carrying heavy rocks or moving sand from one side to another. This of course surprised everyone on the island because that boy who did not appear to be more than 12 years old did many things, such as delivering milk every morning and then going to work in the fields and finally going to work on construction sites. He did this every day and without even denying it, something strange to see in a boy who showed great strength. Two months after starting the previous training, Master Roshi began to teach Izuku math subjects such as history and others because in the words of his teacher what good is it to have muscles and no brain? So the boy studied every afternoon with his teacher. Of course, the subjects were easy for the boy who always paid attention to his teacher. So the months passed as Izuku trained alongside his master Roshi. But now we are in the city of Musatafu in a house where there are two green-haired boys but as everyone imagined they were happy or joyful. On the contrary, 
they were devastated because they had screwed up. But in a big way, but why? Well, let's go back a little to the past. When Izuku left home, his mother didn't notice, much less his sister, until two weeks later when they began to feel like something was missing, or rather someone was missing. After a few more days had passed, they both reacted, of course someone was missing, their brother slash son, they were both surprised because it was true that they hadn't seen him for a while, Inko never saw him again at home and Izumi never saw Izuku in his seat at school, but how had they not noticed before? Easy to answer apart from Inko forgetting her son because she was always paying attention to Izumi, the freckled boy became abrupt with her because he never spoke to her or answered a question that the older green-haired boy asked him and when he answered her it was nothing more than with a yes or a no apart from answering them sharply. The boy never seemed to be home because he only came home from school and then went out to clean Dagoba Beach to go back up to take a shower, make his dinner and go back up to his room to lock himself into sleep. Inko went to Izuku's room to check if he was there but was surprised to see how all of Izuku's closed drawers were empty apart from the room being full of dust implying that they had not used them for a while so her answer was answered. Izuku was gone. Months went by and the news sold like hotcakes because it was another story about that boy who was different from everyone else because he didn't have any quirk, something rare in today's society since everyone had a quirk, so being news about that special boy made them more popular. As the news went viral, the police along with some heroes decided to get to work and began to search for him throughout the country, handing out bulletins with a photo of him while below it said. Izuku Midoriya. Missing. Days passed and these turned into months and no trace of the freckled man was ever found, so with no information about him they decided to presume him dead. Everyone had different thoughts when they heard the news. Some felt bad because he was just a boy different from the rest, others were happy that he was dead because it was a disgrace to human evolution. They had different thoughts, but they all agreed on one thing. Died. As the days passed they turned into months and finally a year all the people continued with their normal course except for two people. Three people, two green-haired and one ashen-haired, because they knew that the boy despite not having had a quirk was a kind and pure person and that hurt them because they were the main cause of his supposed death. Inko regretted having always forgotten him and leaving him aside for Izumi since she cared more about her than him, she always cursed herself inwardly because what kind of mother would do that? In Izumi's case, she regretted that despite being his sister, she always repudiated him because she had a quirk but he was not a phenomenon. She always cursed herself for that apart from being one of his main aggressors who made life impossible for the freckled boy who only tried to move forward but she along with the Bakugo brothers beat him up or made him feel miserable. How many times did she tell him to give up or say things that were cruel but she never regretted saying them until this moment. And the last case Katsumi felt bad for the boy because before he was diagnosed as a phenomenon for not having a quirk, he and she got along very well because they always spent time laughing together or chatting together, but after they found out that he was different from them like his brother and his friend Izumi they began to treat him badly, she didn't know what to do but guided by the actions of her brother and friend she also began to discriminate against him although inside she repudiated herself for doing so now that Izuku was dead she felt the worst contrary to her brother who seems to not even affect her in the least made her angry with him. Then she got angry with herself because it was also her fault. She felt terrible until she remembered that promise she made with the freckled boy years ago. Flashback. We can see two children of about four years old playing together in a park, both seemed very happy playing at being heroes until, due to tiredness, they decided to rest a little. Izuku, haha that was fun, exhausted. Katsumi, yes, it was great. Excited. Izuku, when I awaken my quirk I will become the next symbol of peace, raising his fist. Katsumi, I believe it, I know you will be the best hero Izuku, happy. Izuku, thanks Katsumi he he, blushing. Katsumi, hey Izuku, how about making a promise, shy. Izuku, of course it is? Katsumi, when you become the symbol of peace. You would come to ask for my hand, blushes. Izuku, what does that mean? Will you give me something? Curious. Katsumi, Izuku. Nervous and blushing, don't say that, you know what I'll give you. Nervous. Izuku, I don't know what that is but if it's food I'll do it, smiling. Katsumi, yes. Jumping with excitement. And flashback. Katsumi felt bad because even though she had made a promise with him, it could not be fulfilled because she broke the promise. Katsumi, sorry. I'm sorry Izuku, crying. Finally the ash-colored girl burst out, so many unleashed emotions made her break into tears, she would regret for the rest of her life having caused the death of the boy she was in love with. Returning to our protagonist, he was watching the sunset while resting lying on the ground as his teacher had told him, enjoying the moment. 
Izuku, this feels good. Breathing. Roshi, ah. There you were, approaching. Izuku, master. Turning to look at him, wow what happened to you? Roshi, this? Pointing to his face while a marked hand was seen, nothing important. Izuku, I was spying on the women on the beach again, right? Roshi, that's none of your business. Izuku, ha 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 okay what's wrong? Roshi, well since you have trained your whole body you now have much more strength, endurance, and speed than before. Izuku, really? Not very convinced. Roshi, what doubts do you have about Grandmaster Roshi? Izuku, no, of course not. But the only thing I've done is work and no training. Roshi, hmm. Now you'll see. Hit that mountain with your fist, pointing to a large mountain. Izuku, well. Not very convinced. The boy advanced until he was in front of the mountain, staring at it, analyzing it until he got into position. Roshi, breathe kid. Close your eyes. Relax your muscles and let your blood flow throughout your body and then. Strike. Izuku, breathing and closing his eyes, relax. Let your blood flow. And then. Hit, throwing a punch. When the boy opened his eyes he saw how his fist was connected to the mountain, only that it had a large crater that connected with a kind of fissure, implying that the mountain was split in half. Izuku, wow. Roshi, you see. All that you called work was your training. Work is training. Izuku, I understand master, bowing. Roshi, now let's move on to the next level. It's time for you to learn the art of fighting and apart from that. I'll teach you how to use the key. Roshi, now let's move on to the next level. I'll teach you the art of fighting. Aside. I'll teach you the key. Izuku, teach me key? Roshi, that's right. You will know the key. Izuku, but wasn't it supposed to be a legend? Curious. Roshi, what? A legend? Now you'll see. Follow me, advancing to the beach. Izuku followed him silently to go to the beach, when they were already there he saw how he took off his turtle shell along with his shirt to only be left in his shoes and pants. Roshi, okay, kid, tell me what is this so-called ki? Izuku, ki is a kind of energy that all living beings have, right? Roshi, you are right. Izuku, but I don't understand, how will learning to use ki help me? Roshi, the child ki, apart from being an energy within us, we can use it and mold it to use the techniques that are needed from it. Izuku, techniques with ki? Is that possible? Not very convinced. Roshi, watch and learn. This is a technique that took 50 years to perfect. Pay attention, bending his knees slightly and bringing his hands together and placing them on top of his knee, kame. Haim. Ha. A huge blue sphere came out of Master Roshi's hand, advancing across the ocean, splitting it in half. Was that ki? Izuku, that. Was. Incredible. Surprised. Roshi, he he he, right? Unfortunately, I'm too old to do a more powerful attack. Izuku, never mind. That was impressive master so that's ki? Roshi, that's right, when you can use ki you'll be able to do attacks like these, and you'll be able to hit harder, while your speed and jump will increase. Izuku, teach me how to do that attack. Excited. Roshi, calm down kid everything in its own time. First you will learn the art of fighting to move on to the difficult part. Ki. Izuku, understood master, when do we start? Excited. Roshi, tomorrow at dawn now go rest. Izuku, yes. And so began Izuku's new training as the months passed, the boy learned the art of fighting from master Roshi who taught him combat techniques in which at first he found it difficult since he had never fought against someone. The master taught him several combat styles in which were Kung Fu, Taekwondo, Wing Chun, and Wushu each martial art was learned to perfection by Izuku who showed immense talent it even seemed terrifying how easily he learned something taught by his master Izuku showed his master that he was a prodigy. So the days went by as Izuku Midoriya became more and more powerful. Everything was going well for the boy, whom master Roshi took a great liking to and decided to give him a gift that would surely be useful to him in the future. Roshi, well boy our training is about to end. Izuku, yes, Thank you master for everything ha ha ha. Although I feel a little frustrated that I still haven't practiced using ki. Roshi, boy, what did I tell you? Izuku, there are no shortcuts, just hard work. Train hard and be patient. It will pay off. Roshi, right. Now I want to give you a gift. Izuku, a gift? 
Roshi, here, giving him a staff? This belonged to Goku, it was a gift from his grandfather Gohan so he could get to Karim Tower. I know Goku would have wanted to give it to you ha ha ha. It was also his last memory of his grandfather before he died. Izuku, master. I can't take it. It's a valuable item of Mr. Goku's, refusing. Roshi, Goku would have wanted you to have him, you are his exact image, kid. Izuku, his same image? Roshi, that's right. They have the same personality of wanting to help others as well as wanting to become strong with a pure heart. That's why take it, extending it to him, take the sacred staff. Izuku, fine, taking it, thanks. Roshi, don't worry. You'll have to learn how to use it though. Izuku, yes. Roshi, okay, let's continue with the training. And so time passed giving one more month completing another year of training for the boy who was now 13 years old the boy all this time followed the instructions of his master and trained hard but not always because he took time to rest, eat and play since those were the teachings of his master to have a good condition the boy was an expert in martial arts including having great strength as well as speed and resistance also the boy had learned to use the sacred staff that master Roshi had given him so he was already an expert using it both in combat and defense. After completing his combat training he moved on to the most difficult training which was the use of ki, his teacher gave him simple instructions. Too much could be said. Roshi, relax your body and mind and feel the power flow. Yes great instructions but following that he decided to start with the training in which at first it did not give any results but after two weeks of trying it finally happened. Izuku was in the lotus pose with his body and mind relaxed and clear, he only felt the wind on his face. After so much concentration he began to feel something flowing inside him, so when he opened his eyes he saw how a small blue sphere was forming in his hands. Roshi, boy, you are amazing, surprised, without a doubt this boy is amazing, in such a short time I managed to feel him, impressed. The boy lost his concentration due to his excitement, causing the sphere to explode, sending him flying and hitting a tree trunk. Izuku, ah. Roshi, kid are you okay? Running towards him. Izuku, wow, so this is key? It feels strange. Roshi, over time you get used to it. But now try it again and feel that sensation again. Izuku, yes. The boy got into the lotus position again, feeling that sensation again. After a few minutes he did it again, only this time it was much smaller, so that after a few seconds it disappeared. Izuku, I I F feel T tired, falling unconscious. Roshi, you really are amazing kid, seeing him unconscious, it's his first time using key and he managed to activate it twice in a row. I'm sure you'll be a great hero. After the boy fell unconscious, Master Roshi waited for him to wake up. After three hours of being unconscious, the boy began to wake up. Izuku, yawning, where am I? Roshi, oh you woke up already. Izuku, Master, standing up, what happened to me? Roshi, you occupied the key, that happened. Izuku, use the key? Are you serious? Happy. Roshi, that's right, tell me how you feel? Izuku, I don't know, I feel strange, touching his body, I feel like I have more strength. Roshi, I understand. Alright, that's all for today, we'll continue tomorrow. Izuku, understood. The days passed until they turned into weeks and weeks into months. After five months of Master Roshi's training was over, he had nothing left to teach his disciple. The boy after having gone through a great and tortuous training was already an expert in martial arts, he had great power along with his great speed and resistance, without a doubt the boy was a prodigy also thanks to his training and the multiple jobs that Master Roshi gave the boy, Izuku had a marked body. All of Izuku's training was positive in every aspect except in the area of ki because after having used it and trying for 5 months he couldn't use it again, something that frustrated him a little but leaving that aside it was his last day with Master Roshi. We can see how Master Roshi is sitting on a stone on the shores of the sea, all this while watching Izuku making fighting movements by throwing them into the air. Roshi, you've really progressed Izuku, happy, hey kid, come here for a moment. Izuku, hmm, stopping, what's wrong master? Approaching. Roshi, we started training three years ago ha ha ha. I remember when you came to me for help. Izuku, yes I remember he he he. Roshi, listen kid, I have nothing more to teach you. Izuku, yes, I had a feeling. Roshi, listen carefully, pointing in a direction, if you go south you will reach a large tower. Izuku, Karim Tower? Roshi, do you know her? Curious. Izuku, no, of course not. 
Well, when you gave me the sacred staff, you mentioned it. Roshi, smart boy ha 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 yes, that's right you have to go there and climb it to drink the sacred water. Izuku, okay. Roshi, hmm? And today why didn't you doubt whether it was real or not? Izuku, with everything I've seen with you and you've taught me, anything is possible. Roshi, ha ha ha, he's right. Very well, when you go up you will meet Master Karen, it's time for you to leave to become stronger and be a great hero. Izuku, yes, thank you very much for everything Master, bowing, I will see you again, I promise, turning around, flying cloud. Roshi, Izuku wait. Izuku, hmm. What's wrong, Master? Getting on the cloud. Roshi, when you get to Karim Tower you'll have to climb it yourself. You can't use the flying cloud or the sacred staff. Do you understand? Izuku, yes master. Rising, see you later. Moving away at full speed. Roshi, good luck kid, waving goodbye. We can see a small yellow cloud moving at high speed across the sky. Above this cloud is a green-haired man in a meditation pose trying to use ki. Izuku, damn. Nothing happens, frustrated, like I did last time? I just relaxed and then. Ah. Scratching his head in frustration, I don't remember how I did it. Damn. With his arms raised, anyway, I better focus first on getting to the other Kareem, calm, now where will the Kareem tower be? Searching around, will I be able to find it in this great forest? Total truth Izuku was flying over a huge forest, he was searching for a long time until in the distance he saw a small white structure. Izuku, is that it? I'll have to check it out, heading to the place. The closer he got, the white structure became larger until he was very close and could see it better, seeing that it was an enormous white tower that rose above the clouds. Izuku, wow. Surprised, I'm sure it's that one. Okay, let's go down. When Izuku was close to the ground he jumped from his cloud to walk towards the tower. Izuku, well, according to Master Roshi, he ordered me to go up without the flying cloud or the sacred staff. But why would that be? Maybe it's some kind of training? Well, whatever it is, we have to do it. Excited. Let's go to Kame House where we can see Master Roshi standing looking at the ocean. Roshi, how long will it take Izuku to get it? He'll do it in less time than I did, that's for sure. But he'll do it in less time than it took Goku? Whatever it is, I know you'll get it Izuku. Returning to the Kareem Tower we can see a green-haired boy climbing the Kareem Tower from the outside at a good pace. Izuku, how long have I been climbing? If I called the flying cloud I would go up quickly. But. No, I won't, I will go up this way no matter what it costs me. After four hours of climbing I managed to see a kind of sphere, implying that it looked like a room, implying that I had reached the top. Izuku, great. Excited, I did it, starting to go faster. When Izuku reached the top he entered through a hole that was in the ground so when he entered he could see a normal room with a bed and many vases the boy was curious to know what was there but decided to respect the privacy and continued looking around until he found some steps implying that there was a second level so he decided to go up. When he got to the next floor he could see a huge place with nothing around it except in the center since there was a strange structure implying that it was a fountain with a kind of small vase on it, so he decided to go closer to see. Izuku, hello. Is there anyone here? Looking around, there won't be anyone? I guess I can drink the sacred water, coming closer, I hope whoever lives here will forgive me. When he was about to take the vase someone spoke to him. Hello. Izuku was very surprised when he heard the guy speak because there was no one around him, so he nervously turned around to see who was talking to him. When he turned around he saw a small, fat white cat holding a cane that was taller than him. Izuku, excuse me but who are you? I am Grandmaster Karen. Izuku, oh great. Wait. What? Karen, I am Master Karen who lives in this tower yum yum, scratching his mustache. Izuku didn't believe it, in front of him was Master Karen. But Izuku had another doubt as well. Perhaps. That guy was Master Karen? Karen, I am Master Karen yum yum, scratching his mustache. Izuku couldn't seriously believe it, the cat in front of him was Master Karen? Izuku, excuse me, are you really Master Karen? Karen, of course I do, there's a reason I live here. Izuku, okay. Not very convinced. Karen, what are you doing here kid? Izuku, what, what am I doing here? By the way, excuse me for intruding but I wanted to ask permission to drink the sacred water. Karen, ah so that's it. Good. Drink it, it's that one, 
pointing to the jar in the living room. Izuku, great. Thank you very much, bowing. Izuku approached and took the jar but when he was about to drink it, it disappeared from his hands. Izuku, what? Where is? His question was answered when he saw how Master Karen had the jar on his cane. Izuku, hey, why did you do that? Karen, what are you doing? Come on, take it. Izuku approached Master Karen to take the jar but when he was close the master disappeared again. Izuku, but what? Karen, what are you waiting for, kid? Take it, behind him. Izuku, now you see, launching himself against Master Karen, I have him, catching him. But when I was about to catch him, he disappeared. Izuku, where did he go? Karen, here I am, behind him. Izuku now had no doubt that he was Master Karen, his incredible speed gave him away, he was not a simple talking cat or something like that, he was without a doubt Master Karen. Karen, come on kid, take it, moving the vase, I'm going to get older, hurry up. Izuku, he's very fast. But I can catch him, launching towards him. But again Master Karen managed to dodge it, Izuku always tried to catch him but he never succeeded. Karen, come on kid, don't you want to drink the sacred water? Izuku, well if it's like that then. Getting into a fighting stance, here I go. Driving again. Master Karen managed to dodge it again, but this time with a little more difficulty. Karen, her speed has increased further, dodging it, well, she has certainly trained well. Let's see how she does with this, starting to split. Izuku, I got it, catching it, but in doing so I pass it through, but? What happened? Karen, you failed, behind him. Izuku, I got it. Turning around to catch him but upon doing so he saw that there were more than 10 Karen masters, what happened? Shocked. Karen, come on kid, come get me. Karen too, what are you waiting for? Are you tired already? Izuku, but what did he do? Surprised. Karen, this is a multi-image technique called Zanzoken. Zanzoken. The technique consists of moving so fast that the user's image falls behind and cannot be seen properly to attack. Very often, it is used to dodge an attack and then counter-attack or also to confuse the enemy. The illusion has the same key as the user who performs it, making the opponent unable to discover who the real one is. Izuku, incredible, surprised, but I have a mission to accomplish and it is to take away the sacred water. Here I go. Launching. Again Izuku launched himself at his master but he always dodged him or made a mistake. After a few minutes Izuku was on the ground taking big gulps of air. Izuku, ah, catching his breath, what's wrong? Why am I having trouble breathing? Karen, you're at a great altitude, kid, that's why you're having trouble breathing. Totally true, being in a high area it was more difficult to breathe properly, which is why the freckled man couldn't breathe well. After Izuku caught his breath, he stood up ready to launch himself towards Master Karen, who was waiting to continue dodging him, continuing like this until nightfall. After Izuku had been trying to take the sacred water from Master Karen for several hours, he fell exhausted again. Izuku, you are certainly amazing, Master. Exhausted. Karen, he he he, I appreciate it. Leaving the place. After a few minutes, Izuku was able to stand up and follow the Master to the place he was going to. It was already nighttime so he assumed that he could take the sacred water from the master when he was distracted or even when he fell asleep. When Izuku arrived where the teacher was, he saw him getting ready to sleep, so he approached him. Karen, you can sleep wherever you like. Make yourself at home, going to sleep. Izuku, thank you, bowing. After Izuku found a place to sleep, he lay down and waited for Master Karen to fall asleep to take the sacred water from him. After a few minutes he began to hear snoring from the teacher, Izuku was surprised how quickly he fell asleep but he was more surprised that he let his guard down so easily so he smiled and stood up to approach him silently. When Izuku was in front of Master Karen he could see how he was still holding the staff that had the jar of sacred water. But at that time he was in an internal conflict. Izuku, I have it right in front of me, it will be easy to take it away. But. Damn. Frustrated, I can't do it. Or can I? getting closer. But at that moment the teachings of his teacher came to his mind. Roshi, listen Izuku. You have to work, you have to learn, you have to eat, you have to rest. And you also have to play. Those are the bases of Master Roshi's training to be in good condition. Is that clear? Roshi, there are no shortcuts, just hard work. Train hard and be patient. 
It will pay off. Izuku, no. Moving away from Master Karen, I'll be able to take it off, lying down again, I'll do it right, falling asleep. Karen, he 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 it's the same as you Goku, yawning, I better keep sleeping. The next day Izuku tried again to take the sacred water from Master Karen, who managed to dodge all of Izuku's attempts to catch him. Karen, you're slow, dodging. Izuku, yes I know. Sighing, you are too fast for my master. Karen, it's not that. You doubt your movements when you make a movement you doubt it and that's why you become slow. Izuku, I doubt my movements? Looking at his fists. Karen, breathe calmly and control your stamina, so that you can react to your opponent's movements. Mentally visualize your opponent's next move. Izuku, I see. Well here I go then, getting into fighting stance. They continued like this for several hours in which Master Karen saw how Izuku began to put him in a difficult position. Karen, yes, without a doubt he is very strong and fast, dodging him, but he still doubts his movements a little, he is truly talented. After a few hours Izuku fell exhausted and without any energy. Karen, what's wrong, are you giving up? Izuku, lying on the ground, never. Raising his fists. Karen, then stand up. Izuku, it's easy to say but. I haven't eaten or drank anything. Complaining. Karen, he he he. Follow me, moving forward. Izuku decided to follow him when they reached the main room Izuku saw how the teacher took out a plate with a huge fish so when he saw Master Karen do that he didn't hesitate to think of something. Izuku, it really looks like a cat. When the master finished serving it he sat down to eat it while Izuku watched him from afar drooling a little over the gigantic fish the master was eating, but for him there was nothing. Izuku, master. Is there nothing for me? Shy. Karen, oh yeah sure take it, extending her hand, paw. Izuku, what is it? Receiving it. When he saw what it was, he saw that it was a small green bean. Izuku, a simple bean? Confused. Karen, that's not a bean. That's a hermit seed, if you eat it you won't have to eat for more than 30 days. Aside from that, it regenerates all the energy you lost, it also helps in case you're about to die since it cures every possible wound. Only it doesn't cure any disease. Izuku stared at the seed, was it really that impressive? He decided to trust his master and ate it. When he did it, he felt all his strength recover and at the same time he no longer felt hungry or thirsty, which surprised him greatly. Izuku, amazing. Karen, I believe it he he he, finishing eating, well it would be better to take a nap, yawning, rest, falling asleep. Izuku, he's already asleep, with a drop of sweat, well since, lying down on the floor, I'll rest a little, closing his eyes, and then I'll take away the sacred water, you'll see. Falling asleep. When he woke up he could see how Master Karen inspected the sacred staff. Izuku, hey, don't touch that. Standing up. Karen, what is this strange bar? Inspecting it closely. It certainly looked like a cat. It's curious touch, how it scratches its whiskers, its love for fish, it was undoubtedly a real cat. Izuku, give it back to me, throwing himself at him. Izuku decided to throw himself over the bar trying to recover it at an incredible speed, which Master Karen now had difficulty handling because the boy had become faster than before, putting the master under pressure. After about three hours of Master Karen dodging Izuku by the bar he made a mistake. While running along the edge of a railing there, he slipped to avoid the boy, causing him to slide and drop the staff so that it would fall into the void. Izuku seeing this did not think twice and threw himself towards him without caring about the dangerous fall. Izuku, ah! Lunging for the staff. Karen, boy! Worried, don't do it. Following him to catch him but didn't get there in time and saw him fall through the clouds, boy! As Izuku tried to reach the staff he could see it falling, it was getting closer and closer to the ground so with more effort he approached the staff taking it before falling to the ground. Izuku, grow sacred staff. The sacred staff obeyed the order and grew, avoiding the boy's fatal fall, making him fall cleanly to the ground. Izuku, sigh, now you'll see. Starting to climb the tower at a faster speed, Master Karen. Karen who was watching from the top heard Izuku shout her name giving her a small chill. The teacher watched from the top as the boy climbed at an incredible speed, undoubtedly something extremely surprising. Karen, what speed? Surprised. After a few moments Izuku reached the top with a strong jump and stood on the railing that was there. Karen, kid, are you okay? Nothing happened to you, right? 
worried, I'd better get some rest. He couldn't finish dodging Izuku with some difficulty. Izuku, I'll take that vase away from you, you'll see. Launching himself at it. The master could see in the freckled boy's emerald green eyes, he wasn't joking, he could see that strong determination that overflowed from his eyes, he knew that he wouldn't want to rest so he got into position to start dodging all the freckled boy's movements. As the seconds passed they began to turn into minutes and then hours. When four hours passed in which the teacher dodged Izuku, he began to see the freckled boy's movements. He saw how he didn't make a wrong move. Every move the boy made was the right one. He didn't make an extra move. Every move Izuku made was correct. He didn't make an extra move so as not to exhaust himself sooner. He also began to predict the teacher's next move. As the master dodged Izuku, in his mind he saw how the boy had evolved in such a short time. He was surprised at how in such a short time he put him in a bind by taking away the staff, getting it in three hours for a wrong movement he made to dodge it and now seeing him as he didn't make an extra movement he could only think with pride not bad boy while he smiled under his breath. He knew it was a matter of seconds before the sacred water was taken away from him. While in Izuku's mind the teachings of Master Karen passed. Karen, breathe calmly and control your stamina, so that you can react to your opponent's movements. Mentally visualize your opponent's next move. Izuku determined, began to think about his master's movements trying to anticipate him. Izuku, it would be. Here. Jumping to the side, brushing against him, almost. The teacher was surprised and managed to anticipate it, so he became more serious. After a few minutes it finally happened. Izuku, here. Stretching his hand to his left touching the master's staff, in doing so causing the vase to rise, ah. Jumping, I have it. Catching it in the air, it's mine. I celebrate with the vase in my hands. The teacher was more than surprised, he had snatched the vase from him but then he put on a proud smile watching the boy jump from one side to the other excitedly with the vase in his hands. Izuku, master. Seeing him. Karen, he he he. Nodding. The boy did not have to ask any more. he uncovered the vase and drank the sacred water until it was finished. Izuku, youf. It tastes normal. I thought that because it's sacred it would taste different, why master? Confused. Karen, because it's normal. Izuku, what? Karen, as you heard. Pay attention. The master explained to the freckled boy that it was nothing more than normal water, which did not make him strong at all. But what made him stronger was climbing the Karen Tower along with all the exercise he did there, so in itself the sacred water was nothing more than normal water. Izuku, I understand. Karen, but you surprised me well, kid. Izuku, he he, thanks master, shy. Karen, are you ready? Izuku, ready? Confused. Karen, that's right, you have to go higher, pointing to the sky. Izuku, higher up? The sky? Karen, more or less. You have to go up to Kamisama's palace. Izuku, Kamisama? Surprised, does it really exist? Shocked. Karen, that's right. So get ready tomorrow you'll go up to his palace now rest yum yum, scratching his mustache, let's take a nap. Yawning. Izuku, yes master. Kamisama what will he be like? Looking at the sky.